Is this the ultimate vlogging camera? Let's talk about vlogging with a GoPro. First up, let's answer the main question. Why would you choose a GoPro for vlogging, especially considering the huge amount of vlog setups available at the moment? Well, for me, there's two key reasons why I love traveling with a GoPro and using it for my vlogs. It's small, and most importantly, it's super lightweight as well, which are two things I always look for in any travel accessory. Now, the other key feature of the GoPro, I think at the moment for a lot of people, is the fact it is actually really affordable, especially when you put it into comparison to the mirrorless and SLR setups out there. Now, I've used the GoPro on the road for years now, and I've had a GoPro all the way back to the 35 millimeter film option, which is the original GoPro, and it stood the test of time. I've surfed with it, skydived with it, and taking it through its paces through heaps of travel experience. So it's definitely stood the test of time and is something I can always rely on. Now, the other two things I absolutely love about the GoPro is the fact it's super easy to use, and of course, the super wide angle of vision makes it great for talking to camera pieces. You can chuck it on a selfie stick and you'll capture all of the scene behind you as well. Now, obviously, this lens option is a bit of a disadvantage as well because you're not gonna be able to zoom in to capture any of the action, but for most people when talking to camera pieces, this is gonna be absolutely perfect. So which GoPro should you choose for your vlog setup? Well, today I'm gonna to talk through four GoPro models, GoPro Hero 6, Hero 7, Hero 8, and the GoPro Max. So you can decide which is best for you. First off, let's talk through the GoPro Hero 6. Now this is the oldest GoPro that I'm gonna mention in this list. So it is the most limited in terms of features and resolutions and frame rates. Um, it is, however, the most budget conscious version of the GoPro that I'd recommend. One of the downsides of the Hero 6 though is the fact it does not have the hyper smooth um, functions of the Hero 7, Hero 8 and the Max, which is what gives you that gimbal quality smoothness. Um, now, if you are working to a tight budget, it is gonna be your best option, but if you are looking for the top quality video, I would recommend the 7 and the 8 over this. Next up is the Hero 7. Now, this was the first GoPro to introduce HyperSmooth with that gimbal quality smoothness. Um, it also upped the frame rates on a, a few options, so you've got really nice slow-mo options, which is great for travel videos. And of course, you've also got inbuilt functions like Time Warp, which are great for being creative. Now, alongside that, it is compatible with the full range of GoPro accessories, which is, which is great, so you don't need to upgrade anything, um, both GoPro and third party. Now, one of the disadvantages of the Hero 7, apart from not being quite as good as the Hero 8, is also the fact that the audio quality, even though it's better than the 6, is still not great. But I'm gonna talk more about audio later on in the video. Next up is the GoPro Hero 8, which is my current go-to preference for vlogging. And now the Hero 8 built on the HyperSmooth of the Hero 7 with HyperSmooth 2.0, which offered it up across all ranges of frame rates and resolutions, which now means you can uh, shoot super smooth slow-mo and also 4K in all frame rates as well, which for serious vloggers is a massive upgrade. Alongside that, HyperWarp 2.0 again gave you all the quality features of that with a few extra bits in there. Um, and the audio quality on the Hero 8 is still a step above the 7, even though it's still not great. Um, now they did change the form factor on the Hero 8, so you've got the fold out uh, folding fingers. Um, and also because of this changed look, um, you do need to reinvest in things like the GoPro Super Suit dive housing, but on the whole, most accessories will still fit the Hero 8. I'm also gonna chuck the GoPro Max in as a bit of a curveball option. Now a lot of people are telling the Max as the best GoPro for vlogging. For me, it's still not quite there though. Um, especially for newbie vloggers, uh, the 360 video, although it offers a whole heap of creative options, is gonna be a lot more difficult to edit. And even though you can shoot in hero only mode with the forward facing screen, um, like a normal GoPro, it does only shoot in 1080p. Now for a lot of people, that's not gonna be a massive issue, but for a serious vlogger, limited to 1080p is a bit of a strange move by GoPro. That being said, it's also the most stable GoPro out there with auto horizon leveling. And if you do th shoot in 360, you can also calibrate the horizon in that. The audio quality is also the best of all the GoPros that are out there at the moment. Still not the best, um, but it is something to consider. So for more creative vloggers out there, more experienced vloggers, the Hero Max is a great additional accessory, but I don't reckon it should be your go-to GoPro for vlogging. 
Now, historically, one of the biggest disadvantages of using a GoPro for vlogging has been the audio. And even though the audio quality has steadily improved, especially through the Hero 7, Hero 8, and the GoPro Max, it's still not as good as other options, such as the G7X or the Sony A6400, which both allow for external microphones. Now, alongside the Hero 8, they also launched the GoPro Media Mod. Now, not only does this have an inbuilt shotgun mic, but it also has a 3.5 millimeter jack which allows you to plug an external microphone into your GoPro. And this is an absolute game changer, especially for vlogging where audio is so crucial. Um, I'm gonna talk about the different microphone options in a second, but yeah, the GoPro Media Mod also comes with two cold shooter adapters, which allows you to mount things onto the camera for accessories, including the GoPro LED light and the GoPro LCD screen. Now, personally, the LCD screen isn't a massive game changer for me because the huge wide angle of a GoPro allows you to capture the full uh, scene anyway. So it's not something I'd massively be looking at investing in, but the 3.5 millimeter jack is definitely something you should be looking into the mod for. Now with the addition of the GoPro media mod, it opens up a lot of options in terms of third party external microphones to improve the audio of your GoPro. And now the two different microphone options you'll be looking into will probably be the shotgun microphone and the lavalier microphone. Um, the shotgun microphone is the most affordable and easy to use. You just plug it straight in and it mounts on top of the camera. Um, and it's recognizable from the fluffy thing along it called a dead cat, uh, which makes it quite iconic. Uh, now this is the most affordable option and options like the, uh, the Rode Video Pro and the Video Micro and the Sennheiser MK400 are all awesome options. Uh, check out the link in the description below for my full link on uh, external microphones to check out and more information on those. And now the lavalier one is also the one I'm currently using, uh, which is also known as a lapel mic. Uh, now the Rode Smart Lav Plus, uh, the Rode Wireless Go, and the Rode Lavalier Go are all awesome options. Again, they're linked in the descriptions below. Um, so have a check out those and figure out which option is best for your uh, budget and style of filming. And of course, with the external audio, you don't need to jump straight in and invest a whole heap of money from the get-go. Experiment first with the GoPro Hero 8 or the GoPro of choice. And then of course, you've got the inbuilt shotgun mic on the GoPro Media Mod, which does push the audio that step further as well. Obviously, if you are heading off traveling soon and do want the best kit to take with you, it is worth the investment if you can afford it. Uh, I'm gonna chat about my personal GoPro vlog setup in a minute, um, so that'll have a full rundown of what I personally use, which is a great step of building your own kit. So what's in my personal GoPro vlog setup? Well, currently at the moment, I'm using the GoPro Hero 8, the GoPro Media Mod, the GoPro Shorty Mount, and then the Rode Wireless Go and Lavalier Go as my audio upgrades. And uh, now this is the total vlog setup will set you back about 780 US dollars. So it's not the cheapest, uh, but the Rode Lavalier Go and um, Rode Wireless Go is a large proportion of that. But alongside of that, I do have some other accessories I use. Uh, the GoPro Super Suit is one of my most used ones as it allows me to take it scuba diving. Now the GoPro on its own is waterproof to 10 meters. Um, without the medium mount, I might add, uh, the GoPro medium mount means you can't have the waterproof features of the GoPro. Um, so if you're looking at going scuba diving or prolonged time in the water, then the super suit is a great investment. Now alongside those, the floaty handle is also something I'd hugely recommend as it means you can use it in water without fear of it sinking or losing it. Um, I do also have a range of other GoPro accessories I use. So check out the link in the description below uh, for my most used travel accessories. So you can pick out what best suits your travel style and what you're gonna need to film. So there you have it guys, that's my guide on why I think the GoPro is the ultimate vlogging accessory as well as a run through of my personal GoPro vlog setup. There's links in the description below for my full written guide as well as a run through of all the accessories I've chatted about in this guide as well. As always guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.